have been discussing push down automaton and we have seen that P D A acceptance of P D A by empty store and acceptance by P D A by final state both we considered and we showed the equivalence between the two that is given this we can construct an equivalent P D A in this and given a P D A by final state you can construct an equivalent P D A by empty store. And to show the equivalence between C F G we have seen that given a C F G how to construct a P D A by empty store in the last lecture. Now, in this is what we have to study today given a P D A by empty store how to construct an equivalent context free grammar. Let m is equal to k sigma gamma delta q naught z naught phi b a p d a accepting a language accepting L a language context free language L by empty store. Construct G is equal to N T P S such that L of G is equal to N of M the language generated by G is the same as the language accepted by M by empty store. Now, how do we construct G? Now, in this case we have to specify the non terminals, terminals, productions etcetera. Non terminals will be you have the start symbol plus the non terminals are triples, they are taken as triples Q A they are triples of this form where q and p belong to the set of states first and com third component are states in the push down automata and the middle component is a push down symbol. So, you have to consider all triplets first one can be any state third one can be any state then middle one can be any push down symbol. So, if there are k states how what what will be the number of non terminals if there are k states and m push down symbols what will be the number of non terminals hmm? k into all triplets you have to consider right k squared m plus 1 this is k into m into k k squared m plus 1 right. The number of non terminals will be anyway what is t what is the set of terminals same as sigma same of input symbols. Now, P we have to the production rules we have to define S this S is the start symbol ok one S we have taken that is the start symbol. Rules in P are written like this S goes to Q naught Z naught Q naught is the initial state Z naught is the initial push down symbol and for each p in k start symbol going into a non term this is a unit production please remember that this we are writing unit production. This is to accommodate see for all p see when the store is emptied we are not bothered about the state in which the machine is is not it when the store is emptied 
the string will be accepted, but we are not worried about the state of the push down automaton. So, any it can be in any state. So, allowing for all possibilities for each p we have a rule like this, right. Then the rules we have to write from the mappings, ok. So, if delta of q x or maybe a, a is better. If there is a rule of this form, I will write x because a usually is a symbol x here x can be a symbol or epsilon x can be a symbol or epsilon right. Then corresponding to this you will write a rule of the form q a x p b 1 the triples I am leaving out I will fill later b 2 b 3 up to b n. You will have a collection of rules of this form p contains rules of this form. Now, I have purposefully left out certain things. The rule the mapping is q x a contains p b 1 b 2 a q is there x is there a is there p is there b 1 b 2 b m are there. What about the other things? Now, you see that x can be it can be an input symbol or epsilon x can be a input it is an it is an epsilon move means x will be epsilon if it is a true input move means x will be a symbol from sigma. So, you have q a goes to x p b 1 b 2 b middle components I have written hmm. I should have enough space. How do you fill the other components? So, p b 1 q 2, q 2 b 2, q 3, q 3 b 3 like that cut last you have q m b m q m plus 1. You can fill like this that is you can fill with this portion a with any state if there are k state you can use any one of them. So, for one mapping you will have a collection of rules but whatever you write here you must write here the next one. Hmm. The third component of this will be the first component of this, the third component of will, will be the first component of this and so on and last one this one will be q m previous one will be q, third component of the previous non terminal will be q m last you have written q m plus 1 that is here q m plus what you write here should be the same as this right. So, for one mapping there will be a collection of rules. Suppose, the rule is of this form the rule is of this form delta of q x a 
contains p epsilon that is m is 0 in this one m is not equal to 0 you have rules of this form if m is equal to 0 the uh, mapping will be of this form is not it q x a contains p epsilon then the rule will be q a p goes to x s and p. The rule will be q a p goes to x s and p, right. Now, we have to give the proof that this construction is such that L g is equal to n of m. Now, we will prove that by induction in both directions, but before that let us consider an example. Take a push down automaton which has got two states and input symbols are 0 and 1, push down symbols are z naught and x q naught is the initial state is not z naught is the initial push down symbol and the mappings are given by this it is acceptance by empty store the mappings are given in this manner. Now, look at the mappings and tell me what is n of m what is n of m. We will write the grammar for this, but before that what is n of m? You have to start with q naught and z naught, I will give you a few minutes, tell me what is n of m. Zero power m. Zero power m. One power. What does the first mapping say? If you have a 0 and a z naught, you add a x. Then this says whenever you see a 0, you keep on adding x's. So, as long as there are zeros, you will be adding x's. Then once you see a 1, you go to q 1 and start removing. Now, when you read a 1, what does this mean? When you read a 1, you remove x, but without reading a 1 also, you can remove x. This is an epsilon move which tells without reading a m also uh, 1 also you can remove x. So, what does that mean? Uh, 0 power m 1 power n which is greater m greater than r equal to right more zeros than ones. Is this a deterministic machine or a non deterministic machine? 
is this P D A a deterministic one or a non deterministic? Huh? Non deterministic, why? With Q1 and X, you can use a true input move or an epsilon move. So, the machine is non deterministic, even though there is a singleton here, it is non deterministic. Okay. So, let us write the grammar for this by this method. What are the non terminals? Non terminals are yes, then you have triples of the form first one can be a q naught or a q 1, the middle one can be a q z naught or a x, third one can be a q naught or a q 1. So, 8 triplets you can have is not it, you have triples the first one can be a q naught or a q 1, second one can be a x or a z naught, third one can be a q naught or a q 1. So, 8 plus 1 9 non terminals right. T is equal to 0 1, S is the start symbol and we have to write the rules now, right. <coughs> With S you have two rules Q naught, Z naught, Q naught, see the first two are fixed Q naught and Z naught, third one can be a Q naught or a Q 1. So, Q naught, Z naught, Q naught, S goes to Q naught Z naught Q 1. Then I have to write the rules for the this first let me write the rules for these four which is simple Q naught 1 x is equal to Q 1 epsilon what will be the corresponding rule? For this, I will write 4, uh, sorry, not 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 mappings are there, right. Corresponding to 3, the map, mapping is Q naught delta of Q naught 1 x contains Q 1 epsilon. So, you will have Q naught x q 1 goes to 1, it will be a terminal rule, non terminal going into a terminal rule. Then corresponding to 4, what will be the rule? q 1 1 x goes to q 1 epsilon. So, you will have q 1 x q 1 goes to what? q 1 1 x goes to 1. The corresponding to 5 q 1 epsilon x goes to q 1 epsilon. So, the rule for that will be q 1 x q 1 goes to epsilon. And corresponding the sixth mapping is delta of q 1 epsilon z naught contains q 1 epsilon. The map rule for that will be q 1 z naught q 1 goes to epsilon. These terminal rules are easy to write. Now, the other rules for first and two we have to write. The first one is this delta of q naught 0 z naught contains q naught x z naught. So, for that what you will have is q naught z naught 0 x z naught. q naught here. The rules have to be of this form. Now, what I write here I should write here 
and what I write here, I should write here, right. And I can either write Q naught or Q 1, both possibilities should be taken into account. So, how many rules will be there? There will be two possibilities here, there will be two possibilities here. So, four possibilities will be there. So, let us write down the four possibilities. Q naught Z naught 0, Q naught X Z naught, Q naught Z naught 0, Q naught X Z naught, Q naught Z not zero so I have just written the same thing four times. Now the possibilities are I can write Q not here and Q not here, Q not here and Q not here, right? I can write Q not here, Q not here, Q one here, Q one here. I can write q 1 here, q 1 here, q naught here, q naught here, q 1 here, q 1 here, q 1 here. These are the what I write here, I am writing here, what I write here, I write here. Right? Now, let us consider the, this one. The mapping is delta of q naught 0 x contains q naught x x. So, the rules will be q naught x goes to 0 x this is q naught. The rules will be of this form. Right. Here again, what I write here, I must write here. What I write here, I must write here. I can write a Q naught or a Q one. Both possibilities will be there. So four rules will be there. That is, Q naught x, Q naught. X Q not X Again, all the possibilities we have to consider. If I write Q naught here, I must write Q naught here, and if I write Q naught here, I must write Q naught here. Right? That is one possibility. Then Q naught here, Q naught here. If I write Q one here, I must write the same Q one here. Again, Q one, Q one, Q naught, Q naught. Q one, Q one, Q one. That is all. So, how many rules it has? Four plus four eight plus two ten plus four fourteen rules. Now you can remove the useless non terms. Right? can remove the something has to terminate a non terminal should lead you to a terminal string 
then you see that there are no terminal or there are no rules with q 1 and q naught like this. There are no rules like that in fact, q 1 with the first component as q 1 and the last component as q naught there are no, no rules like that with this on the left hand side. So, such uh, non terminals will be useless first component q 1 third component q naught will be useless first component q 1 ah, q 1 this you cannot rewrite it further if you apply this rule you cannot rewrite this further right. So, this is useless. Similarly, if you have you apply this rule q 1 x q naught this cannot be rewritten as further because with this symbol on the left there are no rules. So, this is also useless you can remove them. Now, what about others if you have q naught z naught q naught right then you will when you apply this rule you will get q naught x q naught right then when you apply q naught x q naught again you will get a q naught x q naught you can do it again and again but that q naught x q naught there is a rule with this on the left hand side but when you write again you will get a q naught x q naught you will not be able to terminate. So, such q naught x q naught q naught z naught q naught are also useless they will not lead you to terminal strings q naught x q naught q naught z naught q naught they are also useful because ultimately it will not lead you to a terminal string right. So, such non terminals and the rules involving them can be removed what are they you can remove this you can remove this you can remove this you can remove this and you can remove So, ultimately you are left with 4 plus 1 5 6 7 rules. Now, look at this and see what will be the derivation starting with this you have to apply this rule. Then with this when you, you generate 1 0 and q 1 z naught q 1 then this q naught x q 1 when you apply you will generate 1 0 and q 1 x q 1 right and the derivation will be of this form s yes, derives q naught z naught q 1 which derives 0 q naught x q 1 q 1 z naught q 1 and q 1 z naught q 1 goes to epsilon. So, this will go to epsilon. So, you have 0 q naught x q 1. Now, for q naught x q 1 this is the rule q naught x q 1 it will again it is a linear rule q naught x q 1 will uh, I should not say linear because this is also non terminal q naught x q 1 generates a recursive rule it generates q naught x q 1 on the left it generates a q 0 and on the right it generates a q 1 x q 1. So, applying it several times you will get 0 some 0 power n q 1 x q 1. 0 power m or q 
naught x q 1, then q 1 x q 1 power m, it will get that. Now, this will q naught x q 1 goes to 1. So, this will go to 1 q 1 x q 1 it can go to 1 or epsilon right. Some of them will go to 1, some of them will go to epsilon ok. So, from this you will generate 0 power m plus 1 1 and then you will have x power m where x can be 0, x can be 1 or epsilon. This will be written as x, x can be 1 or epsilon. So, string is of the form 0 power m plus 1, 1 x power m, m. So, it will generate the language 0 power m, 1 power n, m greater than or equal to n, m n greater than or equal to n. Okay. So, you can see how the construction works, we have illustrated the construction with an example. Now, we have to formally give the proof, how do we formally prove this. You show that Q A from a non terminal Q A P, you can derive a string x if and only if from the configuration Q x A, you can go to the configuration P epsilon so from this if this is true that is from the non terminal q a p you can derive a string x if and only if from the i d q x a you can go to the i d p epsilon epsilon this is what we want to prove we have to this is if and only if we have to prove in two directions right. So, first in this direction again we have to use induction right. q x a derives p epsilon. In induction on the number of steps. So, one step this is in the n steps you have to prove ok. Basis class will be in one step you are deriving basis class. If you have this what will be the corresponding rule by our construction? What is our construction? If if you can go from this i d to i d that the mapping should be delta of q x a contains p epsilon. Then only you would have got this going from on this uh, from this i d to this i d. Now, what is the mapping uh, rule for this? If delta of q x a contains p epsilon, then q a p goes to x is a rule. So, you will have q a p goes to x belongs to p that is q a p derives x. So, q a p derives x. This is for i is equal to 1 from this here 
you are going to this in i steps or something like that. Then the induction portion assume it is true up to i minus 1 steps true for i steps. This is strong induction up to i minus 1 steps we assume the result is true, then we want to prove for i steps. How do we prove this? Now, you are starting with the I D Q x A, right. Now, suppose I write x in the form a y, a can be a true symbol or epsilon. So, instead of x I will write it as a y, a can be r epsilon. Now, the mapping which I will apply will be of this form delta of q a a contains p b 1 b 2 b m. There will be a mapping like this and we have to apply that mapping. First step of the move of the push down automaton will be something like that is not it. So, from q a y a you will go to the id p y b 1 b 2 right. This is first step. So, now if you look at it as this one we have considered even earlier this set of a diagram a was there on the stack right. Now, a and you are in state q. Now, A has been replaced by B 1, B 2, B m on the stack, state has gone to P now. Then some moves may take place. After some two moves take place, the first time B 2 becomes the top of the stack, you would the state will be say some Q 1. or maybe I, I use q 2, q 2 will be better q 2, right. In between the stack may grow and come back, does not matter and B 1 need not be the uh, always here, B 1 can be changed to something else that is also possible, but so far we have not touched B 2, right when B 2 becomes the top of the stack the state is Q 2 right. Then again now the stack may grow and come back. Then when B 3 becomes the top the stack the state is Q 3, but while going from this P to Q 2 some portion would have been read some portion of the uh, input would have been read and again some portion would have been read from the time uh, you start with B 2 on the stack and end with B 3 on the stack as the top symbol. So, ultimately when B m is on the top you will be in state Q m and ultimately this will also be erased because finally, from this I D you are going to some I D um, 
p epsilon. Okay, I need not use the same p instead of p I can say q 1 that is better q 1 if it confuses both p confuses instead of that q 1 I can say q 1 here. Start. So, this is also q 1. In both places, I need not use p. That's why. So, when you start with, say, state q q i and b i on the stack, b i on the stack, and when you read the portion y i, this y you can write as y 1, y 2, y m separated. So, when you start with q i and read y i with b i on the top, you will ultimately you will go to q i plus 1 whole of y i would have been read and now the when q i plus 1 b i plus 1 becomes the top of the stack. Right. So, this is the situation up to this b i you have read up to some o i i minus 1 and you are in state q i. Now, when you read that o i i portion you go to q i plus 1 and b i plus 1 becomes the top of the stack it has been erased b i has been erased. So, this is the situation in that case what do you get? You get q i b b i q i plus 1 derives y i by the inductive hypothesis. So, this should have happened in a lesser number of steps. the whole thing it has taken I am from this to this it takes i, I steps right. The first step is this. So, the rest of the steps will be i minus 1. So, each one will be much less than i minus 1, but by inductive hypothesis this will be the situation. Now, for th this mapping what will be the rule? Q a I will write p here goes to q 1 b 1 here a b 1 q 2 q 2 you can have a rule like this for this mapping where is it mapping for this mapping you have a rule of the form q a p goes to a q 1 b 1 a q 2 b 2 q m b m q m plus 1, but this q m plus 1 and this should be the same this is actually equal to p right. This is the way we have written the rules. Now, by induction hypothesis this will go to y 1, this will go to y 2, this will go to y m. Right. So, that is a y 1 y m which is a a y a y. So, q a p derives a y r a what is a y a y is nothing but the uh, x with which we started x i told you you can write as a y is not it derives right here also derives. So, in one direction we have proved if you can go from this id if you can go from this id to this id then 
it is possible to derive x from this non terminal and we use induction on the number of moves of the p d a. Now, the other way around we have to prove that is if this is true then this happens that is if it is possible to derive x from this non terminal then it should be possible for the p d a to go from this i d to this i d. Here we have to use induction on the number of steps in the derivation right we have to use induction on the number of steps in the derivation. So, what we want to prove is if from q a p you can derive x this implies from q x a you can go to p epsilon epsilon here use induction on number of steps in the derivation in the grammar. Now, suppose q a p derives x number of steps is one basis class. In one step you get this, then it should have been come from it should have come from the rule this rule right x can be a symbol or a epsilon x can x can be a uh, <coughs> x can be a symbol or epsilon. And when is this rule possible? It should have come from a mapping delta of q x a contains p epsilon. Only when you have mapping like this, you would have written this rule, right. Now, we are going from the machine to the rule, does it? Only if there had been a mapping like this, you would have written this rule. So, if there is a mapping like this, what does that mean? Q x a from this i d you go to p epsilon epsilon right. So, for basis class we can prove this. Now, I will rub this off. assume induction portion assume up to i n my i n minus 1 steps proof for i proof for i steps strong induction. So, the rules you know are of the form you are starting with q a p then in the first step you will use some rule and get b 1 b 2 the rules are of this form right. First step of the derivation you are using a rule like this. Where what is this? This is q 1, q 2, q 2, q 3, q m, q m plus 1 which is p. This and this should be the same right. So, the x is and afterwards this is in one step and afterwards in i minus 1 steps 
you would have derived a x and sorry a x right. So, x really can be written in the form a x 1 x 2 x m x can be really written in this form where a is here from this you derive x 1 from this you derive x 2 and so on from this you derive x m. Okay. So, you have q i b i q i plus 1 derives x i and how many steps in the derivation it would have taken less than i minus 1 right totally everything has taken i minus 1 steps. So, it will be less. So, induction hypothesis holds. So, what do you get? q i x i v i from this i d you can go to the i d q i plus 1 epsilon epsilon. That is if I start with q i and x i on the input tape and b i on the top after reading x i it will erase b i. Suppose, I have something b i plus 1 etcetera below that is not going to affect any way. Right? So, if it had erased before finishing reading x i it cannot complete further. Right? See you need at least one symbol on the top of the stack to read it to make a move. So, this also would mean q i x i b i b i plus 1 b m from this i d you can go to q i plus 1 b i plus 1 b m q I am sorry q i plus 1 it would have read the epsilon epsilon stack b a has been erased b m right. Now, this rule what about the first rule it should have come from a mapping delta of q a a contains q 1 b 1 b 2 b m it should have come from a mapping like this right. How can you write a rule like this you are applying a rule like this that is the rule is q a p goes to a q 1 b 1 q 2 etcetera. And that rule you would have been able to write only if you had a mapping like this right. So, starting with q and a string of the form a x 1 x 2 x m and a on the stack this whole thing is x, x we have written in the form a x 1 x 2 x m. Now, in one move it goes to q 1 this a has been read and you are left with x 1 x 2 x m a has been replaced by b 1 b 2 b m. We can go in from this to this in one move. Now, because of the induction hypothesis after reading x 1 it will erase b 1 on the stack and b 2 will be x in between stack may grow and come back that does not matter. So, when it goes to q 2 x 1 has been read and x 2 x 2 x 3 x m is the remaining one. Now, stack contains b 2 to b m. Now, after reading x 2 it goes to q 3. Now, the portion to be read is x 3 through x m and stack will contain b 3 to b m. Proceeding like that ultimately you will have q m x m b m and that will be also erased and you will go to q m plus 1, but q m plus 1 what is q m plus 1 is p. So, from that you will go to p 
epsilon stack whole stack will be emptied and you will go to So, we come to the conclusion that if this non terminal derives x that means, from this i d you can go to this i d. Now, the first rule is of this form q naught z naught any derivation will be q naught z naught some p right. Then that derives x a derivation will be of this form. Now, from this if you can derive x that means, from i d q naught x z naught you can go to p epsilon. So, if x is derivable from x s if x the string x is derivable from s then the first step will be like this then you derive x. Then this is possible means this is possible if and only if from this i d you can go to this i d by what we have proved just now. And what does that mean? This is the initial i d after reading x you go to a final i d which is emptying the store. Okay. That means, s x has been accepted by empty store. So, if the grammar derives a string x then that string is accepted by empty store by the push down automaton and vice versa. So, what we have done is <coughs> given the push down automaton which accepts a language by empty store we have constructed the grammar for that and sh shown that both of them uh, the push down accepts automaton accepts l means grammar generates only l and so on vice versa. They are the same the language generated by the grammar and the language accepted by the push down automata by empty store are the same. Okay. So, this is proving in the other way around with this and we have proved the equivalence with final states. So, you see context free grammars push down automata accepting by empty store push down automata accepting by final state they are all equivalent. And when we say push down automata we mean non deterministic push down automata. Okay.